Alright, so like, I am shirtless. I'm drinking some red wine out of the bottle. I'm wrapped in a um, plush mink tiger blanket, and I am finally ready to return to the absolute fucking mess that is Skyrim Romance Mod. Specifically, the character Cassavir. So, um, I'm gonna try not to retread old ground too much of this since I already made like a little commentary video with him. But to summarize what I said previously, Cassavir is fucking weird. They build him up as if he's got some big disgusting secret, like kind of implicitly something sexual. It's like everything, every discussion is about that. Him and Bishop get into, into arguments about how Cassavir cannot handle the temptations of such a wild and powerful woman, she, her, pussy. About how you, the woman in question, will find out soon enough what Cassavir is really like. I told her you're not half the saint you pretend to be. And then absolutely nothing comes of this. Like, the most that happens is, um, like, several instances of him saying variants of, Damn, I almost regret my non-specific religious vows to no god in particular because I am so horny. You look so beautiful for once in my life. I find myself regretting ever taking my vows, my lady, my lady. Which I was like, is that it? Was his dark secret the fact that he does, in fact, have a libido, as is typical for many adult humans, and nothing particularly shocking or scandalous? And at the time, because I hadn't played the whole mod, my conclusion was, yeah, that's it. That's it. But, um, it was partially wrong. Partially. So Cassavir comes up again later in the mod, though there's no content actually, like, involving him directly. Um, so first, delightful little twink Darren mentions that Cassavir had him ARRESTED for practicing magic in solitude, which is, like, really strange, and I mostly ignored that and chucked that up as a, like, failed attempt at world building. But later, later I'm, like, looking at the characters page on the Skyrim Romance mod website, and they gave lore on why Darren was arrested, and as it turned out, it's because of Darren, who likely threw the first brick at Stonewall, made a giant penis out of ice magic, and insulted Casimir with it. <laughs> yeah, um, that's not important, I just wanted to point it out, and um, how much of an opportunity that the writers missed about having this event have any presence in game, like, fucking shameful. But anyway, like, late into this mod, when the writers suddenly decide they want to have an actual plot involved, it's revealed that Bishop had a brother named Jules, that they did banditry together, etc. But Jules died because of Casimir, to some extent. I can't really say to which extent, because the different threads of the story we are given don't make any sense together. Like, one description of the event is that Casimir promised clemency to Jules in return for betraying Bishop, but then later he talks about how Casimir had an ambush for them or something, and that maybe got Jules killed? So yeah, presumably this was a dragon break and not just really bad writing. By the way, stay tuned for my Skyrim Romance Mod Deep War analysis. I am totally going to email this to Michael Kirkbride, and I will not stop emailing it until he responds to it. And the point being is that when the timeline was mended, Bishop's brother was dead and Casimir was partially the cause of it. So okay. That might be Cassavir's dark secret. One may think that he's a corrupt lawman who abuses his position of power to prey on the disenfranchised. Except it's not, both because nothing about that is surprising or unusual, but because I found the author's Cassavir fanfiction, which heavily implies that there is something else. And it is super fucking creepy. So I'll link it in the description, read it yourself. But the gist of it is that Cass it's Cassavir's perspective of the events of his quest, like, you know, the solitude, the lore-friendly Bobby Royal Ball. Um, and it reveals that Cassavir is not just a repressed caricature who does, in fact, have a libido and is terrible for it. He's depicted as, like, kind of um, close, like, a little bit of a rapist. And of course he isn't actually, because rapists are not people who just lose control or can't help themselves but it really, really succinctly plays into the whole, like, men are slaves to their libido and can't control themselves thing that is, like, an undercurrent in every single fucking victim-blaming bit of rhetoric that you see. 
So most of the fanfiction is like typical Wattpad-esque slock about the dragonborn celestial blue orbs and how her voice is like spring flowers in a meadow. Just describing how sexy everyone looks, like it's painful to read, but whatever. absolute fucking favorite part where he is introduced by a bartender being like you had enough and he's like I think I have and and he's drinking water it, it, it's funny because it's a it's a conversation that's usually about alcohol but he's a he's a paladin with vows of um abstinence and stuff so 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 he's 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 drinking water instead of booze. It's really funny. And through the through it, there's this running thread that like is Casavir patronizingly wanting to protect this delicate flower of an ageless god shard trained into a mortal body. Casavir constantly having to go. Casavir, remember your vows. Like the whole time, like and he's so fucking corny and like fucked up and like sad like he sees this dragonborn in one of those goofy and extremely unlore friendly ball gowns and is like salivating or something everything is a test of his resistance like he can't he can't even he's like he, he like sees her ankles or something and is like just so hard and it comes to a head when they're dancing and i'm just gonna fucking read it here because it is a lot and it comes up as really um rapey so proceed with caution so here's the fan fiction. And when the song reached its apex, she slid his hand up his side, stopping mercilessly at his stomach. Despite wearing his plate armor at a, at a ball, every fiber of his imagination sprang to life as he fantasized about how her touch would feel on that erogenous part of his body. His heart thudded just like the drums the bards were beating, and a bead of perspiration bubbled up above his brow. She could so easily be yours, he thought. <laughs> Sorry, just right ahead. Gazing into her blessed eyes, instantly his mouth salivated and his groin tightened. And on the final note of the song, he dipped her, holding the small of her back with one hand and cradling the back of her head with the other. He then tilted his nose, bringing it an inch away from her neck, and his nostrils instinctively breathed in her intoxicating scent. <laughs> she smelled of gardenias and honey, a combination that le I'm sorry, the combination that left him really inside. She looked at up, up at him with those mesmerizing eyes, as if she knew what he was thinking. Still, she made no move to resist or escape him. She seemed to want him as much as he wanted her, and that stirred the yearning for her inside of him that much more. Take her, he thought, tearing his eyes away from hers, he stared at her lips. Oh, how lovely they looked, how luscious, how totally and utterly inviting. He could stand her temptations no longer. Holding her steadily against him, he lowered his mouth to descend on hers. Feeling her warm breath slip between the lips and grants her job. Blah, blah. She's yours, he thought frantically. All yours. Claim her now. Just as his lips reached within a fingernail width away from hers, though, something tugged him inside. Stop this, Casimir, it screamed at him. Remember your vows. His penetrating pleas were almost deafening, thundering through him more than the bard's music ever could, and suddenly the gripping fog that had ensnared his mind began to lift, and his body felt like ice. My gods, he thought, panting in disgust. It was all he could do to remember to hold on to Reyna as he brought her back to her feet. I cannot believe what I almost did. Okay, so what's being described here is, I don't know, like, relatively benign? 
What's happening is two people who are attracted to each other and in a position of physical intimacy getting a bit aroused by it. Nothing wrong with that. And I think... I think all he's trying to do physically was just go in for a kiss, which was being reciprocated. Like, literally just dipping her into a kiss on the mouth. But the way it's described is, like... It's described that he pretty much wants to sexually assault her. That's not what's actually happening as far as I can tell, but that's how it's written and that's how the scene is like treated. That's how his horror is treated. Like I'm 90% sure it's just about him being horny and going in for a kiss, but it's described as if he's wanting to do something sexually violent. So, so in universe, Casimir is just this fucked up little man who either is like an extremely tragic victim of, a re of religious abuse and it's made him repressed enough that wanting physical intimacy feels like being a sexual abuser, which is sad and horrifying, or that he has all the makings of being a sexual abuser and would like to do that, which is a lot closer to how this mod depicts him and the other characters who are very misogynist and see women as objects to be protected. So in universe, he's probably a scumbag, but I think the most important takeaway here is the message going into the mod itself. Like, when I finally make my Bishop video someday, 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 I'll be going into this, but the writing of this mod has just overall implicit and, like, extremely unhealthy views on relationship. Like, this whole mod is about a nasty bad boy who treats you like shit and devalues you as a human being, but is made better by the cure-all that is a woman's touch. And that's, that's the entire thing. That's, that's the whole fucking thing. Being devalued as a human being and, and, treat, and treated as something lesser to be possessed and fought over is attractive. Other women in this mod only exist as rivals whose sexuality is something disgusting and shameful and kind of cartoonish, or as ethereal non-persons who serve no threat to you whatsoever and are probably manifestations of gods or people pretending to be gods. See my deep lore video later. You are special. You aren't like other girls. Everyone wants you. And Casimir serves as the low-hanging forbidden fruit. He's got vague, non-specific vows that prevent him from fucking, but he sure does want to. He kind of scratches that fetishistic ish you see in a lot of het writing, where the extremely gay narrative of religious trauma's impact on your sexuality is kind of sexy, because damn do people love the idea that devout holy man used to be bad boy naughty. Repression and sexual guilt is something sexy, and not tragic and traumatizing. So, he's repressed, but wants to fuck, and he wants to do so in this creepy possessive way that ties into his, like, seemingly more benign desires to protect the delicate little lady. It's all about being possession. It's all about possession. It's all about being wanted and used, and, like, no matter how much of a strong female character your self-insert is, you're ultimately at the whims of these meatheads, and you should like it. And, like, you know, all of this could be, like, competent satire. Like, it's set up like that. It pretty much writes itself. And maybe the writers don't wholly think this is, like, normal and good. Maybe they think it's kind of weird or problematic. But, um, the other thing is that's kind of a selling point, too. Like, obviously, I'm not going to go into that much here, but a huge chunk of fan content revolves around sexual violence and the romanticization and making porn about sexual violence. So it could it could be intentionally terrible and it could be still something that we are supposed to like because this is Skyrim romance mod. We're supposed to be into this. So I think there's I think there's like two options to it. Like either the writing is pretty much entirely uncritical and unself-aware, and genuinely finds all this, I'm gesturing really broadly right now, all this very romantic and not fucked up. Or the writing is kind of self-aware of what it is, which is a romance centering around abuse and misogyny, and finds this very hot. And yeah, I honestly don't know which one's worse.